so first off, I want to welcome everybody. Uh, we're we're going to focus on today's panel is a discussion around policy, how policy gets made in D.C. around cybersecurity issues. Uh, we obviously want to have a uh, engaged audience and want to take a, as many questions as possible from the audience. And uh, what we'll do to kick things off is I'm going to have everybody kind of introduce themselves. I'm going to start off. I uh, used to be the uh, director of the National Cybersecurity Division in uh, U.S. CERT. Uh, coming up on uh, three months of being out, or three years of being out of government, I think this fall. So uh, been out for a little bit now. And uh, with a, a small security research group called Team Cymru. And, uh, you know, as I mentioned, we're going to go and in, dive into uh, particularly some, some of the issues around, you know, there's been a lot of talk about cyber war and what have you. And what I'd like to do is we're going to start with uh, Mike here in a second and, and work our way down the panel, but to talk about what are the priorities or what are the, the key issues that you see when it comes to cyber conflict or, or cyber war? You know, should we be more concerned about cyber crime versus nation state? So, you know, and what, what concerns each one of you based on the, your vantage point? We've got a pretty diverse uh, panel, so I think we'll uh, have a, a pretty uh, engaging uh, conversation. So uh, Mike, I'll uh, go ahead and turn it over to you. Um, I'm uh, Colonel Mike Convertino. I'm the commander of what's called the 318th Information Operations Group. Um, and I'm, uh, our unit's responsible for uh, essentially uh, malware research, uh, influence operations, and defensive posturing uh, for the network uh, of the Air Force. Um, so uh, a, lot of, a lot of bits and parts thrown in there. Um, but really it focuses on effects that can be brought to bear um, in areas of conflict and the protection of the United States in general. So um, our, I think our biggest concern is that uh, the foundation of the, uh, the country, the, especially the financial system and the economic well-being of our, our, of our nation's companies, the lifeblood of the, the existence of the company from that point of view, be protected and preserved um, to the extent that, that uh, others want our participation. So um, anyway, that's, uh, that's me in a nutshell. Off to you. Hi, I'm Melissa Hathaway. I uh, led uh, President Obama's cyberspace policy review and I was one of the principal architects of President Bush's uh, cybersecurity, the National Cybersecurity Initiative, uh, CNCI. And um, <clears throat> I'm almost uh, coming up on my one year anniversary of leaving the government and um, for those of you following, I've been, uh, I'm an independent and doing an awful lot of writing and speaking on the topic. and. Uh, trying to raise awareness in the United States and internationally on uh, how big the problem is and how, what are some of the areas that we need to work on together to solve the problem. Hi, I'm John Idonacy. Um, I work for a company named White Canvas Group. Uh, I've been involved in, I'm kind of here today on the board to represent sort of the tactical manifestation of all the policy. Um, at the strategic level we can do policy but there's definitely somebody that's going to be affected on the practitioner side. That's where I come in. Uh, I spent over eight years as a Navy SEAL. Um, I, have, I have a couple degrees in computer science. And I really try to bring the marriage of technology into operations uh, that have impact. And I think that uh, I have personally run into a lot of policy issues, authorities issues, cross-wiring, confusion. And I just want to sort of act as a guided voice to remember that at the end of this policy there's a person in a place they probably don't want to be that has a family and we need to make sure that that person can operate legally but with the most potency at, at, at his or her disposal. And, uh, and I believe in this day and age that, that potency and that weapon system itself has a link to, to, the, to the grid, to the cyber and is largely virtual. Good morning, uh, Rich Marshall. I'm the Director of Global Cybersecurity in the Department of Homeland Security. I've got a job that I find really fascinating and challenging, and I'll uh, just briefly hit on some high points. Uh, two of the main areas that we're focusing on associated with computer security is helping to make sure that developers uh, come up with uh, robust software that is relatively secure, at least more secure than it is. And I think some measure of success we can uh, uh, say that we helped influence, of course the market helped influence it as well, is that more and more of the major vendors are being a lot more careful uh, about the software that they produce and offer. The other major concern that we have is associated with supply chain risk management. The opportunity to buy equipments, whether it's hardware or integrated circuits 
or software that has been produced or touched overseas, you really don't have a firm handle on who produced it, who touched it, and what uh, undocumented features they may have introduced into that. Uh, Tom Friedman wrote a book several years ago uh, called The Earth is Flat or The World is Flat, and he talked about buying a computer that went through 27 countries, or excuse me, 27 companies in over 12 uh, countries. And it's very difficult to understand what has been added to that particular product that you're buying. So that's an area that we're trying to draw focused attention to. Uh, policy making, that is a fascinating arena. And let me give you a couple of touch points on that. Number one, policy sometimes is just a bunch of compromises and that results in bad policy. So if you're involved in a policy group, have a leader that is courageous enough to do the right thing, not just to do the comfortable thing. Consensus is good if you're herding cats, but consensus is not necessarily good leadership. Two books I would recommend for you to read. One is by uh, Dick Clark. I formerly worked for him when I was the principal deputy director of the President's Critical Infrastructure Assurance Office. We developed a national cybersecurity strategy, which I will politely say that had it been adopted before it was overly coordinated, we probably wouldn't be having as many of the problems as we're having today. Uh, his book is uh, Cyber Warfare, and it, it is an excellent read. Uh, I'm not here selling his book, so go to the library and check it out or borrow somebody else's copy, but I commend all of you to read it. It's a fascinating read. Uh, the second book I would ask you to read is by another good friend of mine, uh, Stuart Baker. Uh, Stuart Baker uh, has written a book called uh, about developing policy because he was uh, the Undersecretary of Policy in the Department of Homeland Security for a number of years, and I'll come back to that point in a moment. Uh, but his book is entitled Ice Skating on Stilts. So the title alone can kind of give you uh, a grasp of what it's like to, to formulate and announce public policy. When I was there for his book signing, uh, or excuse me, when he was writing his book, he would send me various chapters to review uh, because he was commiserating with the fact that I was coming to DHS and I've been there six months and one week now. Um, he said that he had been at uh, DHS 21 years. And I said, Stu, that's impossible. You've only been there three. And he said, well, you'll find that working in a public policy arena is measured in dog years. So. <laughs> I commend those two books to you. Good morning, Robert Rodriguez, uh, Jerry, and uh, folks, welcome. it's a pleasure to be here. I'm a retired Secret Service agent, moved out to San Francisco uh, 2001, and was tasked with building a public-private partnership initiative, bringing in the industry, government, academia, community focused on cyber. To be honest with you, I didn't even know how to spell venture capital or what ROI or business culture language was. But I quickly fell in love with the, the spirit of the entrepreneurial community in Silicon Valley and saw an opportunity to make a difference. And since then I've retired and have rebooted. And I'm focused on giving the entrepreneurs a voice, advancing innovation through collaborative models, looking for change agents to get on the innovation train. There's a huge gap of awareness between the builder, the researcher, the investor, and the buyer in particular between the defense industrial base and Silicon Valley, which is a metaphor I use for innovation all over the globe in Silicon Valley, but you have it in Austin, you have Chicago, Boston Corridor, et cetera, and the industrial military complex that President Eisenhower warned us about. My guess is the DIB is missing about 50 to 70% of emerging growth companies. When it comes to innovation, our nation cannot afford to leave any stone unturned when it comes to innovation, in particular in the dynamic environment of cyber. Good morning, I'm Mark Sox. I'm a retired Army officer, and I know it says ex-NSC, I'll get to that in just a second. Uh, in 1998, I was asked by the Secretary of Defense to move from a nice cushy job at Fort Hood, Texas, where I was running computer networks, uh, up to Washington and joined this group called the Joint Task Force for Computer Network Defense. We really didn't know what was going on in 98, uh, and so we put together this small group to try and scope out the problem and determine how to defend Defense Department networks against this growing threat coming from foreign countries. 
That was in 98, and of course today we've seen what's happened with Cyber Command and many things that have, that have come along over the past uh, 12 years. A lot of that has been based on public policy and decisions being made strategically and, and at a very large level. Uh, following September 11th, I was about to retire, retired on a Friday, signed into the White House on a Monday morning, uh, was asked by the President to join uh, Richard Clark's team uh, to develop a national strategy to secure cyberspace, to think about how do we move forward in this new world where the, where the rules have changed. So in early 2003, that strategy was produced. Uh, that is a, a, a very big public policy document. It represents the thinking of 2002. Uh, we had a bunch of town hall meetings, and in, in fact, uh, Dick Clark was even out here at Black Hat, did a talk on it uh, uh, during that year. But unfortunately, that document's not been updated. Uh, it is still the current standing national strategy. Uh, as Melissa pointed out, there was a, uh, a review, a policy review that was conducted last year that added to that body of knowledge, but we still don't have a strategic document that lays out a road ahead for the country at the same level as what we did. We, we need that. We, we've got to continue that, that talking. Uh, mainly because things change. Technology changes, people change, the adversary changes, and we've got to keep up to date with that thinking. In the uh, uh, latter part of 2003, I was part of the group that put together Homeland Security, created this organization that, that Randy's in charge of here in just a minute, the U.S. CERT. Uh, but then I left uh, uh, civil service at the end of 2003, and I've been in the private sector since then, uh, but continuing to work a lot of the public policy issues. Today I'm the secretary of the Communications Sector Coordinating Council, and we represent all the comms companies, Verizon, where I currently work, AT&T, Quest, Sprint, plus the cable companies, wireless companies, and others. And we work very closely with the federal government in developing cyber policy and other types of policies for national security and emergency preparedness. What we've come to recognize is this cyber stuff is at so many levels. And in the homeland, first response, uh, uh, fire, police, sheriff, that world, as well as um, health care, utilities, all of that has to work, even while we're continuing to fight this big, large international cyber issue. The, the communications infrastructure has to work. In fact, just talking over this microphone doesn't work without some type of communications infrastructure. So at so many levels, this stuff has to work. And we've all just become accustomed to it being there. Our adversaries, of course, don't want it to work. They would like very much to deny, degrade, disrupt, destroy, the things that uh, we heard about in this morning's uh, keynote address. So therein lies this public and private gathering, the partnership model as we like to call it, and it is so important at a policy level that the private sector and the public sector are working together. Same sheet of music, same set of goals, same ideas. So much of the technology is the same, and many of us are moving back and forth between the public and private sector, so we're sharing the ideas. I would encourage all of you, if you've got any interest in, in working at this level, because we, meet, we need more technology people doing policy. I'm, I'm afraid there's so few of us in the policy space that have an understanding of how it works. We, we get a lot of policy people, but they don't know the technologies, and we've, we've got to get some more techie folks up. So if you want to do something different, come up to the policy side for a little while, and then you can go back to, to the technical side. We'll, we'll answer some more questions as we, uh, as we go through. My name is Randy Vickers. I am uh, the director of U.S. CERT. I kind of, you know, uh, perpetuated my career as uh, the chief of the DOD CERT before I retired out of the Army in 2007. And Jerry Dixon and Mike Witt recruited me to come uh, uh, join DHS and uh, uh, change my uniform and, and fight a slightly different fight, but on the same, uh, uh, but in the same environment. Uh, U.S. CERT has, you know, based on a lot of the uh, presidential directives, the uh, uh, CNCI that Melissa worked on and the other studies, the, the current uh, plan to develop a national cyber incident response plan is changing the, the format and the structure of where U.S. CERT's going to go, and I think in a very positive way. Uh, when I joined, uh, you know, Mike Witt and Jerry and those guys were frantically trying to get people. When I joined, we had eight government uh, civilians. We now are up to almost 60. Uh, with uh, many more in the pipeline and looking for many more. Uh, but we have this huge fight that we're all, everybody in this room, uh, working to, to, to challenge and, and move through. For those that um, uh, heard the keynote this morning, uh, in that triangle of CNO, uh, U.S. CERT is the D. We're the national D. Uh, we uh, work with Cybercom and, and NSA to, uh, as they, uh, uh, fight the, the, the dot mill networks and the national security.